long time ago. There lived a man named Noah. Noah. He was a good man and walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. During this time, there was a lot of violence in the world. And they disrespected God. And God told Noah that he was going to take care of it. And God said, I am going to bring floods and waters to destroy everything. God promised Noah that he and his family would be safe. He gave Noah the instructions of how to build a huge boat called an ark. So that he and his family would be safe. God also told Noah that he should bring two of every kind of animal with him on the ark. Noah trusted God and went to work. He and his sons looked for all the supplies and began to build the ark. It took a long time to build the ark. When they finished, they packed every kind of food for everybody to have what they needed. wife and his son's wives entered the ark and two of every kind of animal came too. Two giraffes, two lions, two elephants, two zebras. Noah did all the Lord commanded him to do. And after seven days, the flood waters came to the earth. The flood kept coming. the high mountains on the earth were covered. The water flooded the earth for 150 days and 10 months the mountains were finally visible. Noah waited 40 more days and made a window. sent out a dove to see the water had receded from the earth. <laughs> but it could not find nowhere to perch. He waited seven days and sent the dove out again this time. came back with an olive branch.
Noah waited seven more days and sent the dove out again. <laughs> and this time, it did not come back. Noah knew the water had receded from the earth. By the 20, 27th day of the seventh month, the earth was completely dry. Noah told Noah, God told Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives to come out. Then the Lord told them to bring the animals out too. Noah followed God every step of the way, and God had brought him safely through the floods. God even placed a rainbow high in the sky. as a sign of a promise, never again flood the whole earth. Noah trusted God. The end. Begin a new focus as a community. Comenzamos un enfoque nuevo. Focused on scripture that is coming from our curriculum for children. All of these messages are focused on what our elementary school children are learning. The August focus in orange is about mission possible. And the primary focus for our children, and I believe important for us, is a call to trust God. Now when I ask you, when I invite you to trust God, I wonder what feelings that invokes. Raise your hand if you think it's easy. Levanta la mano si es fácil confiar en el Señor. Elvin dice que sí. Elvin says it's easy to trust God. Anybody else with Elvin? Nancy says yes. All right, raise your other hand if you're not so sure. Confiando en el Señor, trusting in God sometimes is a very challenging situation. I want you to think about Noah. Sometimes we hear these stories and we think that it's a very simple message. First of all, scripture tells us that Noah was one of the few righteous people who listened to God. And Noah lived in a time when society had become incredibly wicked. La sociedad estaba tan llena de maldad que maltrataban al Señor. Raise your hand if you've ever seen that. That society was so difficult, it pushed God around. Ever seen that happen? And in this time, God chooses Noah and begins to speak to him a vision. Now in the middle of hard times, I would imagine Noah is looking for some kind of spiritual vision, some kind of way that God might show him how to right the wrong or correct people's mistakes. But instead, what does God show Noah? A call to build an ark. El llamado de construir Una arca. I want you to consider that this was not a small project. The ark was to be 450 feet long, 50 feet wide, and three stories tall. This was not a small project. The second thing I want you to consider is that this was not a project that anyone had ever done in his family, in his community, in the world that he knew. Has God ever asked you to do something that you've never seen somebody else do? Dios le ha pedido a usted hacer algo que no has visto a nadie más hacer. Raise your hand if that's true. When God asks you to do something that you've never seen done, graduate from college, the first in your family, graduarse de la universidad el primero en tu familia, go to another country for a new life, ir a otro país para una vida nueva, Build a relationship with God that is real and tangible and personal when no one in your family understands God in that way. 
God calls Noah to do something that has never been known. I think in preparing to preach this morning, the thing that struck me the hardest was not that the project was big, not that the project was unknown, but the project took a lot of time. Ese proyecto que Dios le pidió a Noé llevó muchos años. La Biblia no dice cuántos años tomó construyendo la arca. Pero creemos que fue años. But the Bible doesn't tell us how many years it took Noah to build the ark. But it took years. I want you to think in your life of a time that God has called you to a project that took years of hard work. Can you think of one? Years. See, the thing about being called to trust when the answer is immediate is we only have to hold our breath for a second, and then God answers. But when God calls us to build an ark that takes years, that makes our family the cause of public ridicule, that pretends to understand that events are going to occur that have not yet occurred, it requires a different level of trust. I want to know, have you ever trusted God for a season and gave up because it took too long? ¿Has confiado en el Señor por una temporada y luego te diste por vencido porque llevó mucho tiempo? Raise your hand. I think that's what happens to most of us Christians. We hear, we don't like what we hear, but we say, all right, I'm going to do this for a little while, Lord. And we do it long enough to know that it's hard and that the doing will impact our daily life and those that we love. And when it takes longer than we want, we give up. I'm not willing to trust you that much. I'm not willing to work that hard. I'm not willing to wait that long. And yet, Noah persevered. And as long as it took him to build the ark, how long was there water over the earth, according to scripture? ¿Cuánto tiempo la tierra estaba llena de agua, según el texto? How long? I can't hear you. 150 days. 150 days in the messy middle. Almost half of a year walled up inside of a box. Lord, how is this possibly my freedom? It smells like animals. I must tell you, I don't know what happened in our little drama, but there were no women. There were, there were female lions, and there were female zebras, but there needed to be some females in the boat with Noah. I'm just saying. Right? <laughs> that many days, hold up with animals. Can you imagine how Noah felt when he opens the window, lets the dove out, and she goes all the way around the sanctuary and comes back? Y abre la ventana otra vez y manda la paloma y vuelve con un pedacito de árbol esperanza. After waiting long, the dove comes back with just a tiny piece of hope. God, is this olive branch really a sign or am I just hallucinating? Is there really change, God? Are the waters really going to go down? Or am I just fooling myself? Until finally, on the third try, the dove does not return. Sometimes the letting go is the entryway into a bigger possibility. This was not a project that came with full instructions. Raise your hand if you're a person who likes to know the whole story before you trust. Levanta la mano si es una persona que le gusta saber toda la historia antes de confiar. Dígame todo, Señor. Dígame de A a Z. Dígame qué va a pasar. Dígame cómo me voy a sentir. Dígame qué va a pasar. Lord, I want to know how I'm going to feel, what's going to happen, who's going to move, and how you're going to do it. God said, shh. Trust me. Trust me. Noah was told to build an ark. 
was told that God would take care of him. Touch your neighbor and, said God, and say, God promises to care for you. Toca tu vecino y dígale, Dios promete cuidarte. God promises to take care of you. The promise is for you and for me, for our children, for our children's children. God is faithful all the time. And all the time, God is good. It was not a small project. It was not a known project. It was not a short or easy project. And it did not come with full instructions. Charles Stanley, who is a wonderful preacher, takes this story of Noah and synthesizes it into three very specific pieces. The first thing Charles Stanley says is Noah teaches us to listen. Raise your hand if you like to listen. <laughs> Levanta la mano si le gusta escuchar. Levanta la otra mano si tu mamá te dijo que tienes dos oídos y una boca por un propósito. Did your mom ever tell you you have two ears and one mouth for a reason? The first thing Charles Stanley pulls from this text is that we are called to listen. I invite you to open your pew Bibles to Isaiah 30. And you can tell I've been on vacation. I didn't put this in the, in the sermon outline, so you're going to have to help me. I need someone in Spanish to find Isaiah 30, verse 21. I'll tell you that this has become one of my favorite verses because I'm not always so good at trusting. And in Isaiah 30, the prophet Isaiah is hearing from God who is saying to the people, I know you've hurt, I know you've suffered. I know you have felt without me. Verse 20, God says, Though the Lord may give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore, but your eyes shall see your teacher. This is the verse. Ready? And when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is is the way, walk in it. And when you turn to the right, or you turn to the left, your ears shall hear behind you a voice saying, this is the way, walk in it. Janira, me lo puede leer en Isaías 30, 21, por favor. Este es el camino. Andad en ese. If we continue in Isaiah 30, the story is not so great. Then you will defile your silver-covered idols and your gold-plated images. You will scatter them like filthy rags. You will say to them, away with you. He will give you rain for the seed which you grow the ground and grain, the produce of the ground, which will be rich and plenteous. On the day your cattle will graze in broad pastures and the oxen and the donkeys until the ground will eat silage which has winnowed with shovel and fork. On every lofty mountain and every high hill there will be brooks with water. On a day of the great slaughter when the towers fall Moreover, the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun and the light of the sun sevenfold like the light of seven days. And he will heal the wounds of the afflicted. And yet the people did not listen. Aún con la palabra de Dios, no escucharon su voz. Has God ever spoken, you heard, and chose not to listen? Levanta la mano, si Dios ha hablado, usted escuchó y aún así decidió no escuchar. Every single one of us has done it. Because listening to God's call requires trust. We're going to do something to illustrate this. Raise your hand if you are a teacher. Levanta la mano si usted es profesor. All right, Leah, what grade do you teach? Kindergarten. Do kindergartners always listen to Leah? Not at all. This side of the sanctuary, you are Leah's kindergarten class. Are you ready? So I don't know exactly what they do, but I'm sure they're loud and pay no attention. 
So when I go over here and try to talk to this side, you need to be a kindergarten class that is not listening to Mrs. Bernstein. Can you stand up, Mrs. Bernstein? Are you ready to be a kindergarten class? Este lado está listo. Ser la clase de kinder de la profesora que no le escucha. Está listo. Are you ready to act like kindergartners? Yes? Okay, you got to play your part. This side. This side's my class. <laughs> This side is very obedient. You're going to listen to everything I say. Me van a escuchar todito porque usted es mi clase muy obediente, ¿verdad? All right. Yo le voy a hablar. I'm going to talk to you. And we're going to see if you can hear me because Mrs. Bernstein's class is rebellious and disobedient. Ready? We're going to get them going. On the count of three, you're going to be her class. One, two, three. <laughs> Class, I would really like you to pay attention to what we need to do next. I don't know where we're going to go, but I want you to believe that I am with you. Okay, yeah. I don't know what Julie's gonna do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is the last time they are allowed to sit in a pew with nobody else. <laughs> what happens? When God is speaking and there's a whole bunch of other noise. ¿Qué pasa cuando el Señor habla y hay mucho ruido? Se distrae, we get distracted. We can't hear and we get mad. Would you please behave? What else? What else happens? I was trying to think of a metaphor. I think my husband thinks that my head is like a jar full of marbles. And when I get really confused, what happens to all those marbles? They just move. And when there's all this chaos in our head, we can't possibly listen to God. Para escucharle al Señor, tenemos que estar a solas. We have to be alone. We have to be quiet. We have to believe that God's voice is worth hearing. What if Noah had paid no attention to what God was saying? Charles Stanley says the first task is to quiet the un unruly kindergarten class and listen to God in our life. You will hear a voice whether you turn to the right or the left that says, this is the way. Este es el camino. Ande ahí. The second thing is about trust. First, we have to listen. The second thing we have to do is to trust. To trust deep enough to hear. So I want, we're going to demonstrate this. Cosme, usted me puede ayudar. Mr. Hunter, can you come hold this basketball hoop? So he's going to hold this. You're going to stand. Usted se va a parar ahí, don Cosme. I need one child who's going to tell, uh, actually, probably a child in Spanish. Okay. You come and you come. Come, Alejandro, and you, come. <laughs> you have to hold it up. Okay. Your job, I'm going to make Mr. Cosme close his eyes. And your job is you're going to tell him how to throw a basket into here. Okay, but he's going to pretend like he has no idea how, and his eyes are going to be closed. Okay, so he understands Spanish better, so you have to talk louder. Okay? Ellos le van a orientar a usted cómo tirar la pelota con los ojos cerrados, porque yo confío que usted es confiable. Y no va a ver. Okay? Okay, go put the ball right down in front of him. <laughs> if you hit Hunter in the face, I don't know what to say. Okay, so you guys tell him. Dígale qué tiene que hacer. Escuche, don Cosme. Move it a little to the right. No, wrong way. Light, left, he says. <laughs> Throw it, but not hard, he says. <laughs> okay. 
He did miss. What do you need to tell him? What does he need to do different? Esta means go. You need to go, Mr. Cosman, and go no, and, and throw it harder. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Three. <laughs> Un aplauso para ellos. <laughs> Okay, so raise your hand if you're used to giving instructions instead of listening. Levanta la mano si prefiere dar las instrucciones que recibirlas. Right? We'd rather tell people what to do than listen. And when she says you got to throw it harder, he means, he says, what does that mean? Harder like farther, harder like straighter. Part of trusting is not only listening, but it is listening deeply enough to try again and again and again. Listen to God. Trust him. And the third thing is, once you have trusted, be obedient. Be obedient to what God is asking. I want to close with a poem from Thomas Merton. En el bosquejo de su sermón, hay una oración de alguien llamado Thomas Merton. Thomas Merton is one of my favorite Christian authors. And I included this poem because I believe often when we hear about listening and trust and obedience, we think we have to understand it all. Thomas Martin says, it's not even so much if you understand what God asks, it's your desire to do what he calls. Thomas Martin says, my Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. No tengo idea por donde voy. Levanta la mano si has sentido así. I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. No veo el camino adelante. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Yo no sé por donde va a parar ese camino. Nor do I really know myself. No me conozco a mí misma. And the fact that I think I'm following your will doesn't mean that I'm actually doing it. El hecho que yo pienso que estoy siguiendo tu voluntad este, no significa que de verdad estoy agradeciéndole. But I believe the desire to please you does in fact please you. Creo que el deseo de este, darle placer a usted le complace. And I hope that, that I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope I will never do anything apart from the desire to please you. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road. Yo sé que si yo siempre sigo intentando agradecerle a usted, Señor, me va a seguir guiando. Therefore, I will trust you always. Confiaré siempre en usted. Aún que parezca perdido, even though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death, I will not fear, because I believe you are with me. Aún en frente de la muerte no tendré miedo, porque creo que estás conmigo. And you will never leave me to my perils alone. Nunca me dejarás sola frente de mis dificultades. We must listen, escuchar. We must trust, confiar. And we must obey. And if you are someone who gets lost because a thousand voices tell you it's wrong, if you are someone who gets lost because it takes too long and you give up hope, if you're someone who gets lost because you can't see the whole picture, take his hand and listen for all that he has to show. Uh -huh.